because gratitude comes from love. See, there's two ways to look at things in your life. There's to appreciate what shows up in your life or to depreciate what shows up in your life. And to depreciate it means to complain about it, to whine about it, to, to uh, resent it because it's not big enough, it's not shiny enough, it's not what I wanted. That's a depreciation. And appreciation, to appreciate, means to have a sense of being grateful for it. Gratitude, there's a wonderful definition that uh, I use for uh, gratitude. Gratitude is the complete and full response of the heart to everything in the universe. The complete and full response of the heart to everything in the universe. And this gratitude disallows feelings of separateness from what shows up. See, resentment or complaining or fault-finding are things that block you, are obstacles to that free flow. They reinforce the idea that I am separate from that and it's not giving me enough. Gratitude for what shows up and expressing that gratitude with affirmations and regular affirmations of it is um, a way of keeping that channel clear between you and that divine presence. And doing this, this little ritual that I do with the coins, I also do it when I'm uh, driving and someone lets me in into a lane when I'm trying to change lanes. And there's this very quick and silent little thank you for that loving gesture. It doesn't seem like much. It's not like this big deal. I don't tell anybody about it. I happen to be talking about it now because it's just the focus of this particular principle. But it's not anything uh, that I share with anybody else. It's a very private little thing that I do. When someone lets me into a parking space, a, a thank you, an acknowledgement. You know, when, when I'm in a grocery store and I go out to the car and I take the cart out to the parking lot and I put my groceries in the, in the trunk, I always take the, tr the uh, thing and I take it back. It doesn't seem like uh, this, this is my own little private little thing. It's like I'm grateful for this food. When we go into a restaurant and we sit down and eat and there's um, a sign there that says generally thank you for taking your tray and, uh, and putting it back and for... My children have all learned that when we finish up where we're eating, we are thankful for the food, and we're also thankful for the place that we have to eat, and we, we want to leave it the way it was when we got here. We're grateful for the cleanliness. We're grateful for the air. There's this kind of attitude. I remember being with um, Wally Amos, famous Amos in uh, Hawaii, who also has a program with Nightingale Connor. Everybody seems to. <laughs> And uh, the first time I'd ever met him, we were walking in a street in, uh, in Maui, and he saw a, a beer can there, and he said, excuse me, and he walked all the way over there, and he picked up the beer can, and he put it into the uh, trash can. And he didn't say a word to me, and I didn't say a word to him, but I noticed that. I noticed there was a, a sense of, of gratitude for the islands. It's called an aloha kind of spirit, a sense of feeling grateful and expressing it in everything that you do in your life. And this kind of an attitude begins to become infectious. And it also opens the channel for more to show up. People who are grateful seem to get more than people who are resentful. You know why? Because people who are resentful don't understand that their resentment itself is what's blocking. And when they do get something, their instantaneous response to it is, it's not enough. It's not big enough. Somebody else got something that's better. I should have had this. I wanted it yesterday. I showed up too late. It's not the right color. It's not the right size. You know, the endless not feeling of gratitude. There's a wonderful little old joke about a lady who was on the beach with her grandson. And she's walking along the beach. And all of a sudden, this huge wave comes along and picks up the little boy. And he disappears. And she just goes down on her knees and she just doesn't know what to do. This is my grandson. Please, God, send my grandson back. I can't stay. Oh, what has happened? How could this have happened? Oh, please, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. Good. And all of a sudden, another wave comes along and pops him right back down right in front of her. And she looks at him and she turns around. And she goes on her knees. She says to God, uh, he was wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> I haven't thought of that story in a long time. <laughs> this idea 
is not just good citizenship we're talking about here. It's cultivating this attitude of flow, of allowing, of permitting things to continue to grow in you because gratitude is love. Now, the hardest part about gratitude for most people is the understanding that um, you have to also be grateful when things don't show up. And you have to learn, this is the toughest part, you have to learn to be grateful for that which you don't have and for the suffering that you are going through and for the experiences of scarcity that seem to be present in your life. Because in essence, until you can be grateful in these moments and understand that you can't have sobriety, generally speaking, without having known its opposite. Everything in the physical plane has its opposite. People who have been through addictions generally know and appreciate and are grateful for those addictions when they transcend them. You won't find very many alcoholics who are in recovery who will say, I resent my addiction days. Instead, what they say is, they were the greatest teachers I ever had. And I couldn't be where I am today without having had those. Now, this is true for all of our experiences. I, when people say to me, are you really, can you really say that you are grateful that your father walked out of your life when you were just a baby? Can you really say that he, the time that he spent in prison and the time, the, the, the fact that he never sent any money and the fact that you had to spend early years in, uh, in foster homes and so on and away from the rest of your family, can you really say that you're grateful for that? I say, my father was my greatest teacher. I never met the man. But without my experience of learning to rely upon myself as a young boy, I couldn't, as a grown man, be teaching self-reliance today. Couldn't do it. Because to learn to rely upon yourself is something that you have to have the direct conscious experience of. And when you've had it, then you can teach it. And I'm grateful for it. I was having dinner last night with my oldest daughter, Tracy, and I was thinking about her mother and I, uh, who have been divorced for 20, 25 years now. And I was telling Tracy at dinner that um, your mother, even though we didn't agree and didn't get along, your mother was one of the great people in my life. There are many qualities that both of us could look at in her, and she could look at in me, certainly, and say, these are the reasons why it didn't work. But you can also do the opposite. You can look at this person and say, but look at these qualities. Look at the honesty. Look at the integrity. Look at these things and remember that. And my experience being married to my daughter's mother, to Judy, those many years ago, when I was a young boy, it seems like, taught me how to be not only a better husband later on and a better father, but it gave me direct experiences of being able to transcend my own pettiness and my own inability to relate at a level that I am able to do today. Without that, I couldn't be where I am today. I've often said to people, I am what is called a reverse paranoid. You know, what is, when, when you ask someone, what is a paranoid? Well, a paranoid thinks that everybody is talking about you and that they're saying terrible things about you. And a reverse paranoid is someone who knows that everybody's talking about you, but they're saying nice things about you. <laughs> so when you walk by and someone says, are they talking about me? You say, yeah, of course. Why wouldn't they be? <laughs> and this attitude of being able to be grateful, not just for the things that are manifesting and showing up in your life, but for the things that don't show up and for those experiences, when you get to a point where in this moment I can now say, okay, it didn't show up and there's a great lesson in this and I'll get that lesson and then I'll stop the blockage of abundance flowing into my life. That's what gratitude is. It is the free expression of the heart to the fullness of the universe. 
and an understanding that you're not going to get it all, that you are it all already. You are it all already. That divine, organizing, omniscient, all-loving, unconditional, loving God is in you already. And everything that you need to be peaceful, to have love, to be successful, you already have in this moment. You don't need one thing more. Anything else that shows up is just a bonus from the universe. And you ought to be grateful for all of it, including that which doesn't.